Let's talk about a really interesting vintage component called the selenium rectifier. Anybody who has worked in really old factory equipment or elevators uh, will have come across stuff like this. Oh, and entertainment equipment as well, like bowling uh, pin setters. They've come across these things that are next to the transformer and they've got loads of square metal fins just stacked end to end. These are selenium rectifiers and they kind of predated silicon rectifiers, but once the silicon ones came in, they replaced these completely for reasons that will become obvious as we explore it. This one is, a, I guess, an in-house component for British Oxygen Corporation. It's got a label on it that says International Rectifier UK. And it's got a date code, I'm guessing, 7104-1971. And a component code, 19-027. And this is actually, this stack here is actually two rectifiers mounted in the one shaft. If I go down a bit closer... This uh, shaft goes all the way through, but there is not normally a connection from that shaft. It's usually purely for mounting the rectifier, but I shall test that. I shall put it on here and just scan along connections. No, nothing. Keep in mind they are diodes, but uh, there is con continuity from one end to the other, but not through the actual diodes themselves. Okay, but if I then go on to say the negative here uh, to one of the AC connections you'll see the classic diode junction it's a it's really close to a silicon diode where is it hold on let me just grab a silicon diode I shall hold the on the fingers it's not really going to skew the results yeah very similar if anything it's got a slightly lower forward voltage drop uh, off load than the silicon diode but under load that changes the official voltage drop of one of these diodes in this bridge rectifier is approximately one volt. So these uh, plates, each of these plates is a diode and they make them by getting a piece of metal and then they put a coating of doped selenium on them. Basically that's selenium with a slight impurity just to adjust the characteristics to what they want. Then they coat it with uh, a layer of an, an alloy of uh, metal and they heat them up. And when it gets heated up to the kneeling point, you get a slight, the two layers, the metal surface actually fuses into the, germ the not the germanium, the selenium, and it creates the semiconducting junction. There is a downside. Each of these plates is a diode, but it's only rated for around about 20 volts in normal use, uh, with a maximum voltage of 25 volts. It's also very low current. I would rate this rectifier a few hundred milliamps. Here is what happens when you want a higher voltage diode. This isn't a bridge rectifier. This is actually a stack of diodes in series selenium diodes. One, two, three, four, five, six. That would make this roughly a 120 volt diode. Uh, radio spheres. And it says type rectifier three. So it's a rectifier type three. That's how far back, back it goes really old stuff and it's also it's not rs components it is radio spears is printed on this made in england i wonder if it was made at the same place so let me show you the configuration of this i shall bring it in the notepad and then we'll talk about the stinky smell it makes when it fails which is horrific uh, lift engineers and factory mechanics will know exactly what i'm talking about here's the conventional bridge rectifier layout where all the diodes point from the negative towards the positive. In the case of this one here, uh, this pin that's sort of, sort of aligned differently to the others, uh, it's a positive, that's a negative, a, uh, AC in, AC in. And basically speaking, if you can imagine in here, there's a diode between each of these pins forming the square rectifier. In the case of the slam rectifiers, they can't just basically, well, it's not small, it needs support. It's on this sort of shaft. So what they do is they've got a, threaded rod through them and it forms a sandwich of insulators and uh, and conductors that just mates all these plates together. And the reason there's a black wire at the end that bridges from one side to the other is because it's in a straight line, it loops onto itself again. So ignore this uh, diode here, by the way. Uh, so here's the bridge rectifier with uh, the two connections at the end looped together and that forms a sort of circle. And that is the negative in this instance. So you've got the two AC which are these connections here, they're actually marked on here as two yellow dots. 
the AC. The negative is a blue dot and the positive is a red dot. The reason there's another diode shown the end here is because while I was looking at this, I thought, why is this one got five plates? It's a bridge rectifier with just an extra diode in the end, on the negative end, possibly to create a deliberate voltage uh, difference across part of the circuitry. It would have been probably tube-based circuitry, whatever this was used in. The reason it's black, uh, they will have coated this. You can't shine light onto a selenium surface. It is a photosensitive surface. So they tend to be well dipped. The voltage is an issue. Because this one is rated, uh, each of these diodes is rated about 20 volts. That's it. If you want the higher one, you have to go for the stack of plates. And that is a problem because it means that because one volt is being dropped across each plate under load, this thing would actually drop six volts for a 100 volt rectifier. Compare that to the humble 1N4007, which is so small I'm struggling to pick it up. This is rated 1000 volts. To create an equivalent diode to this, you'd need bigger plates. And also you'd need 50 plates stacked together and the voltage drop across it would be 50 volts. So that explains pretty much why the silicon diode put one up one over the uh, selenium ones. And I can remember, I'm, I'm not that old, but I can remember the marketing companies in the 80s, 90s saying, oh yeah, so uh, you definitely want to stick to selenium because it's got greater fault current handling ability and in a way it does, but but their marketing ploy didn't work and it went the way of the, uh, well, it went the way of things that go go out of fashion. It went out of fashion. Now they're, they're, you can still get them on eBay, which is nice. That's where I got these ones. Now, failure modes. Over time, they will develop resistance, and when they develop resistance, they develop heat. As they get hotter, they break down, they cause problems. They, because they're developing that resistance, it doesn't really help. It causes them to break down faster. And you end up with a situation that uh, they just fail. And when they do, OMG, it's horrific. These things just basically shoot flames out in all directions and this thick, acrid, stinking smoke. The smoke, you'll find warnings saying don't ever breathe the smoke. Oh, it's so dangerous. Don't breathe it. You'll get cancer off. This terrible smoke comes off these. In reality, it's not as bad as they make out, but you won't want to hang around the vicinity anyway. The smoke that's coming off is fine particulate uh, selenium dioxide. And it stinks. Well, the description, common description online is rotting eggs. I wouldn't call it rotting eggs. There is a certain eggy component, but it's a nasty, sickly, vile smell. So you don't have to worry too much about breathing too much of this because you wouldn't want to. As soon as one of these just goes bang, I've had one go bang while I was working. In the panel, I stuck a fuse in. Uh, that's why the fuse had blown. It had gone bang previously and stank the whole control room out. Uh, but as soon as that happens, the first thing I want to do is get out of the area. Not because it's harmful, but because the smell is so bad. It really is awful. So when you go into old, say, vintage elevator controllers that may use a, a selenium rectifier with a transformer for the brake, a 100 volt brake perhaps, so something like this, it would be stacks, it would be like the full rectifier would be like one, two, three, four of these stacked together. And you often find if that's gone wrong, people say, oh, what can I do to replace this? I don't even know what this is. The answer is you replace it with this. This is more than amply rated. This is a typical, uh, I think this one's rated 800 volts or something like that. And it's rated 35 amps. It just blows the selenium rectifiers out of the water. All you'll do in the panel is you've got the, you'll find along that big, huge stack, you've got the four connections going on. Two will be from the transformer. If you look at these pins, it's the square bridge rectifier arrangement you've got the all the pins going one direction except for one that's the positive they always either put a chamfer or a shorter or longer leg uh longer legs i say there's a better description of that or the marker in this case it's positive so the positive is this one the negative will be diagonally opposite and the two transformer connections will be ac here and then the diagonally opposite one to the ac the other side and the case of the panel you literally just drill a eighth inch hole, three millimeter hole, put a self tapper in, take the connections off the original selenium rectifier, put crimp terminals, the speed uh, receptacles on, and you just press them onto this. And that's more or less it. But there is something you should know. The voltage drop across this is gonna be one volt per diode. 
if it is a high voltage application, you've got a big, huge selenium rectifier, everything will have been compensated for the fact that if it's got, say, this number of plates, say the brake rectifier, it's got this number of plates, it'll be dropping six volts. In the case of, say, a 100 volt uh, brake coil, six volts isn't going to be huge, but you should be aware that if you pop one of these in its place, and it was quite a high voltage uh, selenium rectifier, a really big long one, uh, then you may find it does pose a risk of slightly overvolting things. It's usually not that critical. It's going to be more critical in the sort of 1000 voltage type, you know, big stack of 50 diodes. But uh, it can cause problems. Uh, and some of those problems were problems that were just about to happen and it was just on the edge. And replacing it with this rectifier will either make it perform better, a nice snappier action, or it will make coils that were close to the edge burn out. It's just something you should know. But there we go. Now when you go into a panel, you will recognise what these are. You'll know that it's not the end of the world if one has let out the magic and disgusting smoke. And uh, you'll know that you can just basically, in most instances, pop in a new rectifier. But if there's a, the facility in the transformer for different voltage taps, it might, might be advantageous to lower it down. Say, for instance, if it was a 200 and 20 volt input transformer and it was like 100 volt output but it had other taps you might want to move it from 220 up to 240 because that'll lower the voltage from the uh, the secondary down when you do that and it just can nudge things in the right direction if you're replacing this with this but interesting things fascinating things and uh, if you've not smelled one feeling then that's something to look forward to in the future <laughs>